What is going on you guys? This is SuperTal3 and welcome back to the channel. Have you ever wondered how to get an A plus on the securityheaders.com website? Maybe you went and you went to their website and you scanned your website and you got an F and you're like, this is bad. How do I make my website more secure? If that's the case and you're running a .NET Core website, this is the video for you. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to implement all the security headers, even the very latest one, expect-ct into your website to make your website even more secure. This is a follow-up to my original video for .NET Core hosting a website on a Raspberry Pi and that will be linked up in the corner either here or here. I'm not sure exactly which side it will be. One of these sides that video will be linked above for you guys to go watch if you're hosting your website on a Raspberry Pi or wish to do so. Let's head on over to my computer so we can get implementing those security headers. Alright everyone here we are at the desktop and the first thing you're going to need to do is go ahead and open up your favorite web browser and head to https colon slash slash securityheaders.com here if you have your website published you can just go ahead and enter your website i'm just going to enter talco3.com click hide results and scan as you can see i have an a plus because i've implemented all these in my own website and today i'm going to show you exactly how to implement those same security headers in your own website so that you get an a plus for these scans and it helps protect you from any malicious attacks as you can see, here's all my policies that I have enabled. I have everything done except for expect CT and this server header. This server header, I can't remove without recompiling Nginx. And I'm not going to do that because that's just way too much work and makes it really hard for me to update Nginx. And I'd rather stay up to date on Nginx and let them know that I'm using Nginx than to not let people know that I'm using Nginx and be out of date because there are other ways that they can find out. So today we will implement all of these in addition to the expect CT header. It's going to be a first time for me implementing that in my own website, but these I'm going to implement in another website just to give you guys an idea of how exactly to do it. You can go to this website and read about what exactly the headers are, but I have a feeling that you probably already know if you search for this video. This video is just going to make it really easy to implement all those headers in your .NET Core website. So go ahead and open up your favorite code editor. Mine is Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio is great for .NET Core websites as well. You can also use Atom, I think, but I just haven't done that personally because I like Visual Studio Code. So here we are, and the way to implement these headers is go to your startup.cs file. Now here you can see the different ones that I'm using. I'm using the .builder, .hosting, .configuration, dependency injection, and hosting. Those are the things that you're going to need, the using libraries. Those are what you're going to need to make this happen. So the next thing to do is head down to your public void configure application builder app, comma, iWeb host environment, environment thing. Um, this is what it should look like, except for all this stuff after the app.use async stuff. This is how you implement the security headers. And I'm just going to go ahead and show you this, and then I'm going to implement this in a new project so this is pretty much how we do it app.use async context next context.response.headers.add and we have the xss protection x frame options x content type options referrer policy feature policy and content response headers which by far are the hardest and most tedious ones to make. Also we have down here use HTTPS redirection which prevents people from getting an HTTP version of our website. Um, that's also really important if you're trying to stay as secure as possible. So now I'll head over to my terminal and just cd out of this and I'll go ahead and do .NET in and we'll call this web app x, x head for x headers. Now we'll do cd .sus x head and do code dot slash. This will open up a new instance of Visual Studio Code in that folder. Dot slash is the argument to the code command that launches Visual Studio Code's editor. Here we go. So as you can see, it is very similar to the old um, website. And this is how it looks naturally. So we have all these libraries already added in. Um, the only thing that you don't see is all the stuff that you add for the security header. So go down to your configure method like we had in the other and type app.use async, let's see, async 
as you can see intelligence is showing us what to do context uh, okay that, that messed up context comp comma next and then I'll go back and tell us we're trying to take over just like autocorrect go ahead and take this parentheses off and then do an equals error sign like so and as you can see now there's no squiggly lines around the parentheses now we'll do this and here we go so now this is basically saying app dot use so use this stuff asynchronously which means that we're not gonna say okay let's stop and wait and process all this before we can do anything else it's gonna run it like in a sort of separate process so now we'll do the first one which is context dot response dot headers dot add and I'll just take this and make it a bit smaller so that way we can see which ones to add so we do add x dash xss dash protection and then we'll do comma one then we'll do a semicolon at the end all right and the next one is context dot response dot headers dot add and we'll go ahead and add our x dash frame dash options comma and then we'll set it to same origin I'm pretty sure that this means that then we can have an iframe of our website on our website like if we want to have one part and the other part not sure why you'd want to do that but that just prevents other people from making your website and putting iframes in there next our next one is context dot response dot headers dot add we'll do x dash con content dash type dash options you can see we got that right there and then we'll do comma and then we'll say no sniff and context dot response dot headers dot add and then we'll do refer refer dash policy and make sure it comes right out there and we'll do no dash refer no refer and the next one is a bit longer it's context dot response dot headers dot add and this is feature dash policy see and we'll do comma and now I'm gonna go ahead and go to my other website where I already have all of this at and we'll take this and we'll just copy all of this because it's pretty much going to be the same for you and then I'll just go over it in our new website and it just makes it a bit quicker quick note I'm gonna have all this code in a github repository in the link in the description below so that you guys can quickly get it and copy and paste it into your thing however I suggest that you watch this whole video to better familiarize yourself with why you have everything and how to do it yourself it helps to stick in your head and it's all and it's always better than just copying and pasting stuff in there we go put our semicolon at the end right there so here is our feature policy we say vibrate self so only this website can cause our ca our phone or device to vibrate use the camera or the microphone now for the speaker this website can as well as HTTPS, YouTube.com, and www.youtube.com. Also, geolocation is set to self, gyroscope, self, magnometer, self, MIDI, self, sync, XHR, self, push, self, notification, self, full screen is anything, so anything can make our, anything can go full screen, or just fine, it's not going to hurt our device in any way, and payment is self. The next policy we're going to have to implement is the content security policy which is a way harder to implement 
than any other policy on this list and that's because you have to go through and see every single URL that your script is reaching uh, that your website is reaching out to and say okay add this in and it's basically deny everything until you whitelist so there's a lot of checking that goes on and I'll go ahead additionally and copy over this and we'll just go ahead and add this at the end as you can see it's throwing a little error for us right here and that's because we don't have this little piece that's in my other application that says await next so it just is like await next event and we'll just go ahead and add this in paste this in and then we don't need this one there we go so here's our content response headers add content security policy comma and then you have all the arguments so your default source is equal to self and then we have script source element so basically where are we getting our scripts from for me I was getting it from the self so that would be scripts that are actually in the folder for example I have my ww root folder I have a JS script site.css and then libraries.bootstrap that are local and they're stored locally but then also is reaching out for some jQuery stuff to ajax.goodleapis.com api.rss2json.com then we have this thing for my YouTube video next we have style source element um, so that is for self fonts.googleapis.com and fonts.gstatic.com those two URLs are being pulled to get the custom fonts for my websites image source is equal to self so I'm not loading images from any third parties um, again we have font source so both for the style and for fonts it was reaching out both ways for whatever reason so I had to add those in here media source youtube.com frame source YouTube and www.youtube and then connect source is another API JSON site so that's pretty much all of those headers I'm going to show you now how to set it to report so that way you can debug your very your own website and find out what calls it's making so to change this to report only you just do dash report dash only and I'll go ahead and just take out all of these extra entries so that way we can really see exactly what is not what is calling out our website that um, we have to add back in anyway because otherwise if I have all these added in the website uses them it's not going to show us how to implement that for you guys so here we go and now control shift tilde and we'll do dot net run so we run our website and we'll give it just a second because this is the first build of the website but once it's up here it is up and running control click to open up you can see the connection is not private we'll go ahead and do control shift I and I'll just take this and you know drag it out like it's supposed to be now what you want to do is go to console and this is where it's gonna list the things that it's not getting so it's not breaking your website but it's saying hey this is an invalid source okay so basically the issue is it doesn't have a report URI but here's something interesting so it says refuse to load the image data blah 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 localhost and this one w3 org sgb path so all your violations are going to show up in here and then you basically see okay it's run pulling out to this URL so what you do is you would say you go back into your code which is this one right here and you can see that it says refuse to load the image so that means that you need to see image source self so you would go down to your image source and you would add this entry that just says HTTP colon slash slash www.w dot org slash so then go ahead and control C that control s to save and then click dot net run again there we go it's back up and this time we shouldn't have the same errors as you can see there's not really any errors showing up right now which is good if there are any errors it'll show up and you'll be able to remediate those accordingly quick note and I know you saw me do this but I just wanted to go over it with you when you're specifying even though in the URL it shows like sub URLs uh, sub folders in the same site all you do is just the URL and you don't even have backslash on the end this is all you have to do to implement those security headers in your website now 
as you saw on securityheaders.com, there's a new header called Expect CT. So we can click on this, takes us to his blog where he talks about it. All right, so here we have the expect CT header. It said optional enforce directive, controls whether the browser should enforce the policy or treat it as report only mode. So basically you either include it or you don't, whether you want it to, to show whether you want it to enforce or not. Max age um, specifies the number of seconds the browser should cache and apply the receive policy for, whether enforced or report only. So basically, you can just report this in report only mode and set the max age to zero. I'm just gonna copy, actually, we don't really need to copy this, so I'm gonna go ahead and take my actual website and down up here, just because it's a bit easier to do, I'm gonna go ahead and let's make this go away. There we go. Context dot response fonts dot headers dot add and we're going to add the expect ct header so basically following the same principle that we did with the other ones we'll just type expect dash ct do comma and then whatever other arguments so comma and we'll do max dash age equals zero and semicolon. All right, so now we'll type .NET run, and we'll let it build really quick, and here we go. Super fast build time. As you can see, here is a local copy, and we'll go to control through thigh, see if you have any messages. So a cookie associated with the cross-site resource on at YouTube is set without the same site attribute. Future release of Microsoft Edge will only deliver cookies with cross-site requests if they are set with same site equals none and secure. So this is some stuff with YouTube. Hopefully YouTube fixes this, but it's not a big deal for now. As you can see, we're not really getting anything about the new headers, but that's fine. We have it implemented and it just keeps things up to date. So that way, when they are, when it is actually deployed, everything is just fine. All right, so that wraps things up for today's video. Today I taught you guys how to implement the X XSS protection header, X frame options, X content type options, Refer policy, expect CT, feature policy, and most importantly and most difficult, the content security policy headers in your guys' website today. I hope this video was helpful. If you like this video, please consider liking the video and commenting down below if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos. Also, consider subscribing to the channel if you like more cybersecurity content like this. As I try to come out with two videos a week now, one on Monday and one on Friday all pretty much about security topics that you guys, if you like this video, would probably be interested in. Thank you for watching. This is SuperTal3, signing out.